Greetings to all. A warm welcome to all of you. And a new day. A day with maybe the busyness of all the things we need to do, but also a deeper awareness of Jesus Christ in your life. And today we're going to start a new broadcast of Holy in Christ. And the first study, and see it also has a prayer moment together as God's call to holiness. This is your Pastor Yeti. For I am the Lord your God, you shall therefore consecrate yourselves and you shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourselves with any creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And you find it scripture in Leviticus in the Old Testament 11.44 There is not in scripture a word more distinctively defined in its origin and meaning than the word holy. There is not a word that leads us higher into the mystery of the deity, nor deeper into the privilege and the blessedness of God's children. And yet it is a word that many a Christian have never studied or understood. There are not a few who can praise God that during the past 20 years, the watchword be holy has been taken up in many a church and Christian circles with greater earnestness than before. In books, in magazines, in conventions and conferences, in the testimonies and the lives of believers. We have abundant of evidence that what is called the holiness movement is a reality. And yet, how much is still lacking with multitude of believing Christians there are who have none but the very vaguest thoughts of what holiness is. So, let's start together in God's call to holiness. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. First Peter, in the New Testament, chapter 1, the verses 15 to 16. The call of God is the manifestation in time of the purpose of eternity, who he predestinated, these he also called, in Romans 8, verse 30, believers are the called according to his purpose. In his call, he reveals to us what his thoughts and his will concerning us are and what the life is to which he invites us. In his call, he makes clear to us what the hope of our calling is, And as we spiritually apprehend and enter into this, our life on earth will be the reflection of His purpose in eternity. Holy Scriptures uses more than one word to indicate the object or aim of our calling, but none more frequently than what Peter speaks of here, God has called us to be holy as He is holy. And Paul addresses believers twice as called to be holy. In Romans 1 verse 7, in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 2. God did not call us, he says, to uncleanness, but in holiness. When he writes, the God of peace sanctify you completely, he adds, he who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. The calling itself is spoken of as a holy calling, 2 Timothy 1 verse 9. 
And again, I invite you, if it is possible, to have a notebook with you where you can write everything down. The eternal purpose of which the calling is the outcome is continually also connected with holiness as its aim. He chooses us in Him that we should be holy and without blame. Ephesians 1 verse 4 God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 13 Elect according to the for knowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit. 1 Peter 1 verse 2 The call is the unveiling of the purpose that the Father from eternity has set his heart on, that we should be holy. It needs no proof that it is the of infinite importance to know rightly what God has called us to. A misunderstanding he may have fatal results. You may have heard that God calls you to salvation or to happiness, to receive pardon or to obtain heaven, and yet never notice that all these were subordinated. It was to salvation through sanctification It was to holiness in the first place, as the element in which salvation and heaven are to be found. The complaints of many Christians are the lack of joy and strength, as the failure and lack of growth were simply due to this. The place God gave holiness in His call, they have not given it in their response. God and they have never yet come to an agreement on this. No wonder that Paul in the chapter in which he has spoken to the Ephesians of their being choose to be holy, chosen to be holy, I mean. Praise for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God to be given to believers, that they might know the hope of their calling. First, Ephesians 17 and 18. And let all of us who feel that we have too little realize that we are called to holiness pray this prayer. It is just what we need. And let us ask God to show us how, as he who has called us in himself holy, so we are to be holy too. Our calling is a holy calling, a calling before and above everything, to holiness. Let us ask him to show us what holiness is. Is holiness first and then our holiness to show us how he has set his heart on it as the one thing he wants to see in us as being his own image and likeness and to show us too the unutterable blessedness and glory of sharing with Christ in his holiness. Or that God by His Spirit would teach us what it means that we are called to be holy, as He is holy. We can easily conceive what a mighty influence it would exert. But as He who called you is holy, you also be holy. How this call of God shows us the true motive to holiness. Be holy, for I am holy. It is as if God said, Holiness is my blessedness and my glory. Without this you cannot, in the very nature of things, see me or enjoy me. Holiness is my blessedness and my glory, and there is nothing higher to be conceived. I invite you to share with me in it. I invite you to likeness, to likeness to myself. Be holy for I am holy, Is it not enough? Has it not attractions? Does it not move and draw your mightily the hope of being with me? Partakers of my holiness. I have nothing better to offer. I offer you myself. Be holy, for I am holy. 
Shall we not cry earnestly to God to show us the glory of His holiness, so that our souls may be made willing to give everything in response to this wondrous call? As we listen to the call, it shows also the nature of true holiness. As He is holy, you also be holy. To be holy is to be godlike, to have a disposition, a will, and a character like God. The thought almost looks like blasphemy until we listen again. He has chosen us in Christ to be holy. In Christ, the holiness of God appeared in a human life, in Christ's example in his mind and spirit. We have the holiness of the invisible one translated into the form of human life and conduct. To be Christ-like is to be God-like. To be Christ-like is to be holy as God is holy. The call equally reveals the power of holiness. And no one is holy like God, like the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 2 there is no holiness but what he has or rather what he is and given holiness is not something we do or attain it is the communication of the divine life the inbreeding of the divine nature the power of the divine presence resting on us and our power to become holy is to be found in the call of god The Holy One calls us to Himself, that He may make us holy in possessing Himself. He not only says, I am holy, but I am holy, and I am the Lord who makes holy. See Leviticus for that, chapter 22, 32. It is because the call to holiness comes from the God of infinite power and love that we may have the confidence that we can be holy. The call no less reveals the standard of holiness, but as He is holy, you also be holy. Or, like the Holy One who calls you, be yourselves also holy. There is not one standard of holiness for God and another for man. The nature of light is the same whether we see it in the sun or in a candle. Likewise, nature of holiness remains unchanged, whether it is God or man, and I mean humanity and all this, in whom it dwells. The Lord Jesus could say nothing less than, You shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Matthew 5.48 When God calls us to holiness, He calls us to Himself and His own life. The more carefully we listen to the voice and let it sink into our hearts, the more will all human standards fall away and only the words be heard, holy as I am holy. Remember when Christ called you? You are a new creation. The old is passed away. The new had come. And as the Holy Spirit dwells in you, That's why Christ calls you perfect. You are perfect. And he's not mentioned that as the human body, as the human flesh, but the inside where he lives of you. Shall we not cry earnestly to God to show us the glory of his holiness so that our souls may be made willing to give everything in response to this wondrous call. And the call shows us the path to holiness. The calling of God is one of mighty efficacy, an effectual calling. Well, let us both listen to it. Let us both listen to Him. And the call will, with divine power, works with it offers. He calls the things that are not as tough they were. His call gives life to the death and holiness to those whom He has made alive. 
He calls us to listen as he speaks of his holiness and of holiness like his. He calls us to himself, to study, to fear, respect, honor, to love, to claim his holiness. He calls us to Christ, in whom divine holiness became human holiness, to see and admire, to desire and accept what is all for us. He calls us to the indwelling and the teaching of the spirit of holiness, to yield ourselves so that he may bring home to us and breathe within us what is ours in Christ. Christian, my beloved brother and sister, listen to God. Listen to God's calling you to holiness. Come and learn what His holiness is, what yours is and must be. Yes, be very silent and listen. When God called Abraham, he answered, Here I am. When God called Moses from the bush, he answered, Here I am. And he hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. God is calling you to holiness, to himself, the Holy One, so that he may make you holy. Let your whole soul answer, Here I am, Lord, speak. Show yourself, Lord, here I am. As you listen, the voice will sound ever deeper and ever stiller. Be holy as I am holy. Be holy for I am holy. You will hear a voice coming out of the great eternity from the council chamber of redemption. And as you catch its distant whisper, it will be, Be holy. I am holy. You will hear a voice from paradise, the Creator making the seventh day holy for man whom He had created and saying, Be holy. You will hear the voice from Sinai amid thunderings and lightnings and still it is, Be holy as I am holy. You will hear a voice from Calvary and there above all it is, Be holy for I am holy. Child of God, have you ever realized it? Our Father is calling us to Himself, to be holy as He is holy. Must we not confess that happiness has been to us more than holiness? Salvation than sanctification. Oh, and it is not too late to con- correct the error. Let us now band ourselves together to listen to the voice that calls to draw near and to find out and know what holiness is. Or rather, find out and know himself, the Holy One. And if the first approach to him fills us with shame and confusion, make us fear and shrink back, let us still listen to the voice and the call. Be holy as I am holy. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. All our fears and questions will be met by the Holy One who has revealed His holiness. With this one purpose in view, so that we might share it with Him, as we yield ourselves in deep stillness of soul to listen to the Holy Voice that calls us, it will awaken within. It will awaken in us a new desire and strong faith and the most precious Of all, promise will be to us the word of the divine command. Be holy, for I am holy. Pray with me. O Lord, the only Holy One, you have called us to be holy. Even as you are holy, Lord, how can we, unless you reveal to us your holiness? Show us, we pray, how you are holy, how holy you are, what your holiness is, so that we may know how we are to be holy, how holy we are to be. And when the sight of your holiness only shows us the more how unholy we are and teach us that you make partakers of your one, your own holiness, 
those who come to you for it. O oh God, we come to you, the Holy One. It is in knowing and finding and having you that the soul finds holiness. We do beg you, as we now come to you, establish in it the thoughts of our hearts that the one object of your calling us and of our coming to you is holiness. You desire to have us be like yourselves, partakers of your holiness. If ever our hearts become afraid, as if it were too high, or rest content with the salvation less than holiness, blessed God, let us hear your voice calling again, Be holy, I am holy. And let that call be our motive and our strength, because you who call us will also do it. Let that call mark our standard and our path. Well, let our life be everything you are able to make it. Holy Father, I bow in lonely worship and silence before you. Let now your own voice sound in the depths of my heart, calling me, me holy, as I am holy. Amen. Let me give you some further thoughts. Where or in whom does holiness begin? Let me press it upon every re- uh, listener that if it is to help him in the pursuit of holiness, he must begin with God himself. You must go to him who calls you. It is only in the personal revelation of God to you as he speaks, I am holy that the command, be holy, can have life or power. And a second thought I will give you, remember, as a believer, you have already accepted God's call, even though you did not fully understand it. Let it be a settled matter, that whatever you see to be the meaning of the call, you will immediately accept and carry out. If God calls me to be holy, holy I will be. Do you strive to make yourself holy, or do you rely on God to do it for you? Take firm hold of the word. The God of peace himself sanctify you completely. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. In that faith, listen to God galling you. And how can you understand the meaning of the word holiness? To be still now and listen to your Father's calling you. Ask for a a count on the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of holiness, to open your heart to understand this holy calling. And then speak out the answer you have to give to this call. My dear ones, I gave you a lot of information, but a lot of in-depth to meditate and to pray on. When you came to Christ, God called you. Try to take the time to listen to the voice of God. And it can happen in in every place or space you are. It is on that present moment when you make your insight in a quiet moment that awareness will come. And I don't know how God will work or do it in your life. But I know that He is faithful. And His promises are true. May God bless your heart. May the indwelling of the Holy Spirit will give you a new overflowing of His living water and living bread that Jesus Christ is. And that your heart, like Jesus always says, that it will overflow. Living water overflows from your belly, so let the streams flow. Don't ask one centimeters. Ask to be overflowed and overflowed with Him, Christ the Lord. 
Blessings, my dear ones. This is your Pastor Yeti. Bye.